The Committee on Parole is called to order. Today is August 24th, 2021. The time is 10.45 a.m. Members of the panel today are Bonnie Jackson, Tony Marabella, and Pearl Wise will be chairing today. Our remote location is at LTCW. With the staff at LTCW, please introduce themselves. April Bauer. Okay, thank you. Would the offender please introduce yourself for the record, stating your name and DOC number? Heather Martinez. Uh, my DOC number is nine. I'm at seven five six two seven six. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Let me explain the process here. First, I will read information into the record, then the board will conduct a parole interview with you. At the appropriate time, we will allow the participant who have indicated to speak to have their input. We have Ms. Destiny Daniels, who's a victim, but is here unopposed and will be speaking in support. Okay. At the end, you'll be allowed to make a brief statement before the board votes. Do you understand the process, Ms. Martinez? Yes, ma'am. Okay, this is the case for Heather Martinez, DOC 756276, date of birth, December 31st, 1992, classified as a first felony offender. Offense is carnal knowledge of a juvenile, sentencing date, January 5th, 2021, sentenced to three years hard labor with one and a half years suspended, three years probation. Parole date, February 17th, 2022, Good time, not eligible. Full term, July 1st, 2022. Is this information correct? Yes, ma'am. Ms. Jackson. Good morning, uh, Ms. Martinez. How are you doing this morning? I'm okay. Are you nervous? Yes, ma'am. And why are you crying? I've never been through this before. Okay, well, that's okay. That's okay. It's nothing to cry about. I just want to talk to you a little bit, find out some things about you and some things about what happened in this case, okay? You good? You all right? Yes, ma'am. Okay. How old are you? 28. Okay. Um, how far did you go in school? The eighth grade. Um, did you finish the eighth grade? No, ma'am. Why not? What happened? I have a learning disability. Okay. Uh, were you in regular classes or were you in um, a, a different kind of class? I was in regular classes. I just quit because I couldn't learn anything and the teachers wouldn't help me. All right. So you couldn't keep up. And you got discouraged and you stopped going. Is that what happened? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Uh, after you dropped out, what did you do? I'm on disability. I just um, went home with my mom and held my mom. Uh, have you ever been able to work? No, ma'am, I'm disabled. Uh, is it because of your learning disability? No, ma'am. I have a bad leg. What's wrong with your leg? I have leg calpertes. One leg is shorter than the other, and I can't stand or sit for a long period of time. Okay. And you've had that situation since birth? Um, no. I was learning how to roller skate, and I fell on a branch, like a tree branch. It was about like this. Mm -hmm. and I fell and when I did the blood started flowing into my into my leg and the blood wasn't flowing right so they went in and took a bone out and put a metal plate and screw in my heel okay okay and how old were you when that happened oh uh, about five or six years old okay all right um how long have you been in jail? Since January the fifth. All right. So you 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 got sentenced on January the fifth. Is that right? Yes, ma'am. Okay, let me ask you something. When you got arrested, remember when you got arrested for the charge? 
Yes, ma'am. Did you make bail? Did you get released until you went to court in January? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And how long did you stay in jail before you were able to be released? Um, two days. Okay, so not, not very long. No. And then when you came to court in January of this year, uh, the judge um, gave you a sentence and you had to serve half of it in, in prison. Is that correct? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Uh, how have you been? How have you adjusted while you've been in prison? Good. I've I've um, realized a lot of things. I become stronger. I become more. I have faith, and I learn to what I supposed to do and not do. You, you didn't know that before you came to jail. I did, but it, it it was more accurate to me now. Okay. It opened my eyes more. Okay. Um, you've only been in since January. Have you had a chance to take any classes? Do they offer any classes where you are? I have one. It's a sex offender class, but they just with the COVID and stuff going around, they just started it back. And I already had my parole date before they started these classes. Mm -hmm. yes. I, uh, I go every Tuesday. I just didn't go today because I'm here. I go every Tuesday. Okay. How many how many do you think you've been to? Probably about I want to say five or six. I mean we we just opened it. It I just understand. it I just understand. it just started coming back open. And then the, we was going into classes. Then the COVID came back really, really bad. So they started closing it down. So we have to go pick up a packet and go back to our dorm. Okay. Um, well, let me ask you this. Uh, even though you've only been in five or six classes, can you tell us something you've learned? Yes. Um, I've learned to don't do things that somebody puts you in a position to do, like what my husband did. My husband put me in a hard position. You you were married? I'm married to Jeffrey Martinez. And what position? I mean, I don't. How does that relate to the charge that you're in jail for? Because he threatened to kill me. If what? If I didn't. I have. I, Okay, it's all right. Take your time. I'm just trying to understand, uh, Des, uh, Heather. I'm just trying to understand, okay? I, I, I remember a little bit, but I've been through so much. I don't, I've never been to jail. I understand. I understand. Well, uh, were you in an abusive relationship? Yes, ma'am. He hit on me all the time. Um, and what you, when you are released, what's your plan as far as that relationship is concerned? I'm getting a divorce. Okay. And I'm going home to be with my children to help be a mother that I was supposed to be before I came here. How many children do you have, Heather? Two. How old are your children? Seven and five. Uh, seven and four. Okay. Who has your children? My mom. What's your mom's name? Wendy Hall. Right. Uh, who is Desi Farrington? Uh, the victim's mom. 
Okay. Um, hold on. Well, while, while you were talking about um, your classes, I want to know what, you, what you've what you learned about yourself and about your situation from your sex offender classes. I am who I am. What does I that mean? Tell I me and who are you? I am a just somebody that made the best day. And I have to learn from it. Okay. And what was your mistake? Tell me what your mistake was. Denial. What were you denying? Um, the fact that I have to be a sex offender. Uh, do you do you admit that you did something that would make you a sex offender? No, I did. I'm just in a denial. Well, what about now? Are you in denial now? I've been in denial since day one, and I'm still trying to adjust. I just so, want to go home with my kids. I, like I, I know, I know, I know you do, but. I, Again, uh, who is Peggy Daniels? I have no the idea. But Desi Farrington is Destiny's mom? Yes, ma'am. Because they got a victim statement from uh, a Peggy Daniels, and they list Miss Daniels as Destiny's mother. Desi Barrington is her mom. That is her um Destin, Destiny Daniels. That she doesn't want to have anything to do with her daughter. Wait, I'm, I'm no no. Okay. I don't understand. I'm sorry. No no. I'm just I'm just trying to figure out who Peggy Daniels is. I don't know. And who was the person who was in the hospital? Uh, that you were there with uh, Destiny. Who was that person? Uh, Desi Farrington. So, and that was um, Destiny's mom. And you and uh, Destiny were at the hospital uh, while her mom was there. Is that correct? Yes, ma'am. And the, uh, the, the act, the sex act, one of them happened uh, while you all were in the room of Desi Farrington. Is that correct? No. Okay. Then tell me, tell me about the situation. What happened? How, why are you here? Uh, why did you plead guilty to carnal knowledge? Tell me what you did and when those things happened. I didn't. I didn't understand when I went to court. Nobody went to court with me. And I tried to tell the judge that I didn't understand what he was saying. And he didn't comprehend apparently either. And I um, I guess sometime or another in between when I was going to court this last time, I agreed to the, because I'm, I'm still saying I didn't, didn't even I didn't sign it nothing to to say that I uh I have I don't even I don't even know exactly how to that I um was guilty I didn't say anything like that did you did you have a lawyer yes and the victim's mom even came up there to defend me from going to jail, my lawyer would not let me let the let Miss De Desi talk. Okay. 
All right. Um, so you're saying none of this ever happened or because that's kind of different from what I have. Because when you gave your statement, you said that you were coerced into committing these acts and you just went along uh, with them because destiny was coercing you. That's what you put in your statement. You don't, you don't remember put, uh, saying that? I don't. There's been a lot happened since then. I don't remember. I mean, my I've been in here. I mean, I don't remember. I had two officers in there with me today that they was asking me a whole bunch of questions. I was scared, so I ain't no telling what I might have said. Well, I'm I'm uh, I'm looking at what you said when you apply for parole. Okay. Um, I didn't apply for parole. They just sent me a date. Okay. I'm I'm trying to find out where uh, where I saw that because you um, I do have a statement from you. Hold on. I, I can't find it uh, right now. Um, okay. And do you know how many, how long the sex offender program is supposed to last? A year. Okay. Um, all right. Is there, any, is there anything? Uh huh. Is that page 29 that you were interested in her letter that she wrote? Scroll down to page 29, perhaps that's what okay. you're looking for. Thank you, Ms. Wise, very much. Okay, this is a letter that the parole board received, uh, Heather, uh, <clears throat> where you, 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 you thank us for the opportunity to come before the board you want your parole to be granted so you can return to your family. Uh, you've got some health issues which are getting more severe and you can't get the proper care. Your family is your support system. Uh, I have learned to make better decisions, more confidence, more self-esteem. Uh, remember, uh, you say I was negatively influenced but i don't have the second something stopped i i didn't get the whole letter looks like the second page was probably on the back of that miss uh, jackson and it probably didn't get scanned right okay so your plan if you're released is to go and live with your mom is that correct yes ma'am what town do y'all live in franklin parish oh gilbert Okay, and that doesn't help me very much. I don't know where Gilbert is. Um, What's it close to? What's the biggest place it's close to? Winsboro. Okay. Um, An hour from Monroe. Okay, Monroe. So Monroe is probably the biggest place, and they probably have sex offender treatment programs in Monroe. Do you have transportation? Yes, ma'am. Okay. All right. All right. Is there anything the uh, prison staff wants to say about uh, Ms. Martinez? No, ma'am. Other than she has no write-ups. Okay. All right. Well, thank you very much, uh, Ms. Martinez. I appreciate you talking with us, and, and that's all I have today. Thank you. Uh, Miss Miss April, before we are, uh, how far along is she in that sex offender? What are you? What's the anticipated uh, completion date? They I know. started in July, so I mean it is a year long. Okay, but it's with the COVID and the 
doing packets again? I don't know. That's true. Yeah. We're, we're, we're back to that. So I, I really don't know. Okay. How that's going to fly. Thank, yeah, thank you. Th thank you. That's, yeah, thank you. All right. All right but, best answer. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Well, at this time, uh, Mrs. We have no further questions. Uh, Ms. Teresa? Yes, ma'am. We have Ms. Destiny Daniels, who's a victim who's opposed, who would like to speak. Hello. Hello, we can hear you. Go All ahead. Right. Um, so the lady that was talking first, I don't I didn't catch her name. Um, first I would like to say that Peggy Daniels was my adopted mother and Desi Farrington was my biological mother. Thank you. Yes. And I, do I say why I'm unopposed? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. I am unopposed because um, what what she did wasn't as bad as it could could have been with any anybody else. And hearing her statement and what real what she said happened. I was already thinking with careful consideration that she deserves a second chance in my book. I know I can't speak for y'all, but in my book, I believe she deserves a second chance. Well, thank you. Um, is there any other statements you wanna make? Mm, no, ma'am. Uh, let me ask you, because uh, in, in the reports we got from probation and parole, there were some concerns about you. Are you okay? Um, besides mentally, physically I'm all right, but mentally um, I'm not okay. Right. I'm seeing you a therapist for it. Good, good. Okay, good. That's, that's glad to hear that. Okay. Well, thank you for uh, being brave to come and share today. Yes, ma'am. You're very welcome. That's all you wanted to tell us? Yes. All right. Well, thank you. You can put your uh, device back on mute. Thank you. All right, Ms. Heather, uh, at this time, there are no further questions. Is there anything you want to tell us before we vote? No, ma'am. All right, thank you. Is the panel ready to vote? All right. Um, Heather, um, <clears throat> I, I'm, I'm, I'm really honest with you. I'm a little confused about where we are in your situation. I'm, I'm glad that you're enrolled in sex offender classes, but then on the other hand, you tell me that you're in denial, you're still in denial. And so clearly you need um, to complete sex offender treatment um, because of COVID and because of the amount of time you have remaining, you're probably not gonna be able to complete those classes during your term of incarceration. But I think it's very important uh, that you complete them. And unless we grant your parole, if you, um, you make it on to your full term date, then we don't have the ability to order you to comply with any conditions because you would no longer be under uh, supervision. So my vote today uh, is to grant uh, your request for parole uh, and to make a special condition of parole, one, that you complete uh, sex offender treatment, and two, that you are to have no contact with Destiny Daniels. Do you understand that? Yes, ma'am. Okay. So my vote today is to grant your early release. Um, thank you. Uh 
Mr. Mayor Battle. Uh, Heather, I, uh, <clears throat> I, I've listened very intently. Uh, I, I do agree with my colleague. Uh, Bonnie, I, I would add that she additionally get a mental health evaluation uh, as a condition of her release, if you're okay with that. Yes. Uh, my, my vote would be uh, likewise to grant. Uh, we think that this sex offender treatment is extremely important. And I also think that uh, uh, your needs assessment is indicates that you, you really do need some uh, mental health evaluation and perhaps some counseling. So uh, my vote today would be to grant with the conditions as outlined uh, by Ms. Jackson, as well as the uh, obtaining a mental health evaluation and follow whatever treatment is recommended. Uh, uh, Heather, when, uh, when we say have no contact with um, the victim, what does that mean to you? What are we saying? Don't talk to her. Don't go to her house. Don't look at her. You see her walk the other way. Yeah. And if she calls your phone, don't, don't answer. answer it. Right. Because we can't order her to not have contact with you, but we can order you to not have contact with her. And I'm glad to hear that. Uh, I'm, I'm, and, and, and another thing I want you to be aware of, because you are a sex offender of a juvenile victim, you're not going to be allowed to have contact with your children. Uh, so your residence plan, I know you should stop rocking and your children are minors, uh, you're going to need uh, a whole lot of special permission to be able to do that. And, and it's rare. I'm just going to be honest with you. It's rare that you get it because you already have law enforcement opposition uh, to your early release. So I just wanted to put that on your plate to be aware of that you contact with your children because you are a sex offender with a minor victim. That strongly impacts that. It really does. And if you're around your children, if you're allowed to be around your children, it's going to have to be supervised. So you're going to have to get and that standard to get us a full residence plan before you're released. But I'm going to take a chance. On. I live with my mom. I know. I know. And that's got to and get that's supervised. That's supervised. My, they yeah. sleep with my mama anyways. The uh, probation and parole will work that out. But I want you to understand that my vote is to grant as well for the reasons already been stated upon an approved residence plan. Your probation parole goes to your mom's house and asks about the living situation and the sleeping situations. Uh, they are either going to approve or disapprove. And we'll cross that bridge when we get there. So in the meantime, continue to go to class and you're not going to be released until we get that approved for probation and parole. But good luck to you, young lady. Your parole has been approved today. Okay, I have a question. Yes, ma'am. The complete sex offender treatment, is that while in here or on the outside? It's on the outside, on the outside. Okay. But we like for her to continue in it. I, I like for her to continue it while she's there, pending the residence she'll approval. She'll continue to go, but I just wanted to note in case she asks later. Thank you. Can I ask one question before we leave? Yes, one question, yes. Um, when? How long will it take the probation officer to go to my mom's house? I can't answer that. Oh, you can't? Okay. Yeah, because I'm not the probation officer. I don't work there, they're in Toluda. I have no idea. Okay. Okay. That concludes our, thank you. That concludes our business. Thank you so much, uh, Ms. April, as always, for being ready, being prepared. We'll show out, uh, uh, we concluded at 11, 14, 8 a.m. Thank you. Yeah, that was something. Uh, she stopped rocking when she said, you can't have access to her children. It was like the moment she just realized, oh, I just want to say, throw out, how do we unpack this? I personally am taking the stance that I don't believe that she is as uh, disabled as she was le leading on. We've seen manipulative behavior by roaches on all levels. And I do believe she is just a straight up roach. And she was playing her manipulation card and maybe she's been playing it all her life. 
I went to special ed. I literally took the short bus to school. I have never had a passing report card. I am a high school dropout. So I'm not saying this from my high little throne. I understand that there are different types of level of, of dis mental disabilities. But when Miss Wise, I think, asked her, do you know what it means, no contact? She responded real quick. All of a sudden, her slow, not understanding things disappeared. She yelled it out real fast. It means I can't call. It means I can't go to her house. It means that I see her, I need to walk away. It was instant. She forgot her act. She forgot to keep the act going. She starts off, remember this, how broken our system is. She was given a three-year sentence of which she was only, my understanding was only to do probation. She never had to spend a day in jail, but she didn't register. She didn't register, so she was revoked. Then she goes through the litany of excuses Make sure to say, I went to special ed. Make sure to say that she has a physical disability that she got when she was roller skating. Then she says, my mistake, what I learned, my mistake was denial. Not her mistake is the act that she did. No, it's denial. That was her mistake because she didn't register. And that's why she's locked up. So her mistake is not registering. Because otherwise, she wouldn't be locked up. Then she says that she did it because her husband was going to kill her. Yeah. She's going, I Googled him. Nothing comes up. Doesn't mean he's not a bad guy. He might be. But then she says... Hold on one second. The, the Orkin guy is here. Just one second. And I'll, I'll, I'll tell you a story about, about that in a second too. Maybe you haven't, if you haven't seen it, but then about that uh, that episode. It's the um, there's like your the orchid man is here and it's spraying inside and it smells like this sweet poison smell. Um, where did my nuts go? Sign something? Ah, uh, okay. Sorry about that. Um, the Orca Man was here to spray, and I don't know if you saw the hearing, and I'll link it below, but we covered the story of the orca man who was a serial grape ist uh he would hide in their homes and he actually attacked women multiple times the same ones over the course of months before being caught uh god it smells like sweet it's i don't even like doing the poison stuff it's just it, whatever um, he, 
Yeah, that that was an intense hearing. Oof. That was like out of a terror terror movie. So I was just I was going on before I um I have all this notes here and I got up where did I put it? Yeah. First her husband and then it was her husband. And then and she's acting like she's just too dumb to know. She went to court. She didn't understand. Uh, she didn't know. The, the was confused. The judge, she just signed papers. She didn't sign papers. And Miss Jackson's like, well, you had an attorney, right? I mean, she, I again, I believe she was, if she was like a man sitting here playing this game, it would, and it, I really don't. And then to think the, the the victim called and she sounds like this. Still in her voice and the way she spoke and the way she answers questions, she still had that innocence. She said, I'm calling. Well, she first answers and says, you know, we don't have the stories, but the two women in the house, one was her biological mother and one was her stepmother. So from the gist that I'm getting from this, it seems that they were involved, maybe? I don't know. But regardless, she's been failed her entire life. She calls up and says, I think she should be released because it wasn't as bad as it could have been. If that is not still, if that is just not the most heartbreaking words, it wasn't as bad as it could have been. I would be terrified and naive to, to not believe that someone coerced her or convinced her, manipulated her into making this call. How are you doing? Well, physically I'm okay, but mentally I'm not. I'm seeing a therapist. And all this happened in 2021 and we haven't this hearing was in what 2021 we haven't seen her back yet so she hasn't gotten caught but the judge's hands were really tied she was just didn't have much time left in her sentence and can't blame them it's the system that failed her everyone failed her <laughs> 